This video is part of our Qt C++ GUI development intermediate course. It is this chapter here on deployment and we will be deploying the application we build in the course on Windows, Mac and Linux. The link to the course is shared in the description below. You can also check out the other courses we have on Qt. You can learn about Qt Quick and Qt Widgets. In this lecture, we're going to see how you can deploy your Qt applications on Windows. And we're going to be using Painter app as a use case. Okay, so here we have Painter app, the last version of it that we did in the last chapter. And it is working pretty well. You can run it. The app is here. It can run in multiple languages and we like it. And this is the best version of it we've ever done. Now we want to be able to package it so that we can send it to our users. But so far, we've been building it in debug mode. And debug mode is something you see here under this button. You're going to see debug, profile, and release. Profile is something that is in between debug and release. And I've never really used it, so I don't have much I can say about it. I am going to only talk about debug and release. So debug is what we've been using so far, and it makes it really easy to find problems if you want to debug and find problems about your application. It contains more information about the source code you are using, and because of that, the binaries that you generate in debug mode are going to be much bigger than what you can have in release. For example, here we have debug enabled. We can try and build the application. We have built it before, so it's going to overwrite whatever we had before, but we can, but we can come here to projects and go where our project is built. If you look here in general, you're going to see that we have our build directory. We can double click here. We can select all of these things, copy that, and go to our file browser and uh, we can go where our project is being built. And if we go in debug, remember, we are building a debug version of our application. We're going to find our binary that is generated here. And you can see that here it is selected. It is 13 megabytes. It is pretty big. Let's try and generate a release version of our application. And you're going to see that it's going to be much smaller than what we have in debug. So we're going to come here in release. We're going to enable that. Qt Creator is going to set up what it needs to set up. We're going to try and build the application and uh, it's built in uh, two seconds. How cool is that? We're going to run it. You're going to see that it's going to run exactly the same way it's been running in debug mode and we can use it however we want. But uh, what I want you to see is if we go to projects again and go where it's being built, we're going to copy the path and we're going to go to our file browser and we're going to browse to there. I am going to paste in this guy here and I am going to go in release this time. You're going to find that my binary is much smaller. Remember we had 13 megabytes in debug mode now our binary is really small. It is 500 kilobytes. How cool is this? So if you want to ship your application to your users, you should use the release version of your application. I hope this makes sense. Now that we have the release binary that we want to ship to our users, how do we send it to our users? The first thing I want to do, I want to put together a folder where I want to put everything I need for this application to run. I am going to go somewhere on my file system and I'm going to create a new folder. I am going to name that one painter app manual because we're going to do things a bit manually. I am going to copy my binary here and I'm going to go down in my folder and I am going to paste that in here. Now, I want my users to be able to run this application. So what they are going to do, they are going to double click on this binary if they run their application. Let's try to do that and see what happens. If you run this, you're going to see that it's going to tell you that it's missing something and it's going to tell you the name of that in here. In this case, it's missing Qt Core 5. DLL. So this is what we need to give to our application to run. Hmm, where do we find this? 
We can go to the location where we have Qt installed. In my case, it is on the C drive. I am going to go to Qt, choose Qt512. I am going to go inside Qt512.3. I am going to choose the kit I am using for this course. It is MinGW here. Go inside and I am going to go to the bin directory. And if I go inside, you're going to see that I have a lot of DLLs. This is where I am going to be getting those things my application needs to run. And you will going to come in here every time your application is going to complain about some Qt related things. They are going to be in here. So what I am going to do, I am going to copy Qt Core 5 DLL and I bring that into this folder here, Qt 5 Core. Let's go down and see if I can find it and I can't find it. Qt5 Core DLL, and you see that we have two versions of this guy. We have Qt5 Core and we have Qt5 Core D. This D version is going to be for debug. In this case, we want to deploy a release version. So we're going to use the one without a D. We're going to copy that. We're going to put that in our folder here, and we're going to try and run the application. Now it is complaining about another thing libgcc sseh1 dll we're going to find that in here let's go to the top and a look at this this is exactly what our application is missing we're going to copy that we're going to hit this and uh, paste in our dll we're going to open again and uh, we're going to find something else we need libwinp thread1 dll and that happens to be this guy here we're going to copy that and uh, we're going to put that in our folder we're going to run again and it's going to miss something else which ends in a 6 dll and uh, that's this thing here we're going to copy that and we're going to put that in our directory we're going to run you're going to keep doing this until the application runs and uh, we're going to go down and find qt5 gui and we find that Qt5 GUI is here. We're going to copy that. We're going to hit OK here and we're going to put in our DLL. Run again. Huh, we need something else. Qt5 widgets. Our application is using that. And uh, we're going to scroll down until we find Qt5 widgets. And I think we should find that somewhere here. We're going to get that. Make sure you don't get debug versions of this libraries because we want the release versions without a D. You see we have widgets.dll and widgetsd.dll. We want the one without a D. Let's run and uh, watch what happens. Painter app is running and uh, this is really all we need to put together for the application to run and uh, it can run in multiple languages. Let's try this and uh, run it again in French. For example, we're going to hit OK and we're going to close and we're going to try and double click on it again. And it is going to run in whatever language that we choose. And uh, this is really what I wanted you to see, the process you go through to hunt for the DLLs your application needs to run. There are better ways to do this. You're going to see the tools we're going to look at probably in the next lecture, which are going to make it really easy to get these dependencies, but they're not going to give you everything. Sometimes you will need to come back here and hunt things yourself. That's why it is important for you to know this process. And uh, this is really all we set out to do in this lecture. We put everything we need together for our application to run on Windows. In the next lecture, we're going to see how you can make this easier using WinDeployQt. So go ahead and finish up here and meet me in the next lecture.